Welcome back, this is Yamajack, and today we got Gunslinger Lavender Town Suicidal. And uh, today, I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. I'm excited. I'm thrilled, in fact, one might say. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, about a year ago now, when COVID started to, like, really pop off, you know? When COVID, when, when COVID was really like, you know, hey, uh... I uh, want to be included in uh, the world too. You know about uh, about that time. I um I had an appointment for a uh, an app I had an appointment for a consultation at a uh, urology office, I suppose, um, for an orchiectomy. Which, uh, if you don't know what an orchiectomy is, it's the uh, it's the removal of, of a couple of um, problems downstairs. The removal of a, of a couple of, uh, of, of of problems downstairs. Uh, it's a uh, well, it's, it's 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 goodbye balls, you know. Um, and uh, it got canceled because COVID happened, and they're like, hey, you know, it's uh, mostly a cosmetic surgery, so I mean, it has like mental health benefits, but nobody really cares about that. So, also, it was like I agreed, it was you know not really worth it when with the risk of COVID. Um, but, you know, still. I was very disappointed when it happened, because I was, I was really looking forward to the orchiectomy. Um, it, it brings with it a number of benefits. The first of which, of course, is, uh, I no longer have to take Spyro, which is like a gross pill that's annoying to take, um, and just kind of bad all around. Don't like it. Um... Don't have to take that anymore once uh, once I don't have the testosterone factories anymore, because because uh, the only thing it's doing is is preventing the testosterone production. So you know, with the with the balls gone, don't have to take Spyro anymore, and that's that's a, that's a load off my shoulders for sure. I still have to take the uh, the estrogen supplement. I still have to take the estradiol, but um, those are small pills. They don't taste like anything. It's fine. But the uh, the Spyro is like a sulfur pill. It tastes like sulfur. It's terribly disgusting. Um, Down you go. and, uh, yeah, I don't have to take that anymore once, uh, once the balls are gone, right? That's, that's awesome. The next big reason why it's awesome for it to be gone is, like, I don't want them. You know, that's, that's a big reason why I'm, I'm happy to have them gone, uh, is I, I don't want them. You know, they're, they're a big stress in my life. I get, uh, really upset honestly it's like uh, if you ever had like phantom limb or if, if you know you know what phantom limb syndrome is right when people do like lose limbs will still like feel like they have it and they'll feel like an itch on their arm or something even though they don't have an arm anymore and they just can't itch it but uh, their brain is just sending those signals that like hey your arm's itchy itch it but you can't itch it it's not gonna be itched um, trans people kind of have a similar thing where um, I'm only gonna speak for trans women here. I'm, I'm not a trans man. I don't know what they experience personally. But uh, for me and a lot of the trans women I know, oftentimes, whenever you have to interact with the uh, with the genital region, um, you're like actually just expecting there to be, you know, more of the the feminine side of things. You know. You're, you're expecting that to be there like oftentimes I'll, I'll be getting dressed or whatever and I'll be like what the heck's this and I'll like try to remove it I'm like oh right yeah no that's my uh, the symbol of my despair that's that's right I remember I remember um, so like working towards removing some of that is is of course very very nice um, it also helps with uh, like wearing tighter clothes because uh, it's, it's a fair bit of mass that gets removed. It's a lot easier to, to hide what's left, <laughs> for sure. I mean, you, you can tuck and whatnot, but, like, just not having anything to tuck is, is of course, much better. Um, it has some impact on um, the, uh, the sexual side of things, of course, when, when you don't have testicles. That's, that's, that's a big impact on, uh, on how stuff kind of works down there, you know? Um, kind of continues to, to align it more with, with what I'm kind of expecting there to be. Um, anyway, 
I had, uh, yeah, I had got the appointment today. They, uh, they emailed me again to be like, hey, uh, March, we're going to do another consultation. Let us know if you're good for that. And I'm like, heck yeah. I'm so excited. It's, uh, I just, uh, ever since I got that email, I've just been thinking about, like, because it, like, it, it's a consultation in March. So it's like two and a half months away or something like that to, to when I actually get to go for the consultation. And then the surgery itself is not then. It's, it's going to be, you know, we, we go for the consultation and then maybe then we, like, make an appointment. But what's likely is, like, I'll have to wait again and then they'll get back to me and be like, hey, we can take you in on this day. And who knows when that day is, right? It could be more months away. Um, it'd be great if it was like, hey, we can take you like, next week. And I'll be like, uh, yes, please. But uh, that's that's not likely. So it's it's like a good five, six months away before I actually go for surgery, which is kind of a good thing. Kind of. I mean, I, I wish it was right now. Um, you know, I wish it was like tomorrow, right? Like, the sooner the better, of course. But um, since last year, I've put on quite a bit of weight. Um, quite a bit of weight. I'm losing weight, for sure. But uh, even even uh, even though I've been losing weight, I'm still quite a bit heavier than I was. Um, and uh, I don't like inconveniencing people who are doing like medical work for me. You know, like uh, dental people, um, surgeons. You know all that. And uh, you know, being overweight, fat, you know, and going for for a surgery. Uh, like especially like a cosmetic surgery it's just not super pleasant for the surgeon and then i feel bad for like subjecting them to that now the other thing is is like you know i will i will subject them to that um it's it's you know how long does it take like an hour or two maybe for an orchiectomy like i don't think it's it's a particularly complicated surgery and then you probably release like pretty much immediately like it's it's a very common thing that gets done right um but still you know, it's like an hour or two, right? And then uh, they have to put up with uh, with operating on somebody who's a little bit fat. And uh, I guess I have like the happiest day of my life. I think it's a good trade-off. So I would I would do it, but uh, I don't. Uh, I'm not I'm not too upset that it's too far away because I get a little bit more time to lose some weight and maybe make their jobs a little bit easier. I'm not like you know a 500 pound beast or anything like that, but. Uh, Anytime you have somebody who's who's overweight, it, it just it does add complications. Now, how many complications it can add to that area? I don't really know. Like, it they they still have you know access. <laughs> it's not it's not like it's that bad, right? So I don't I don't know what kind of complications, but um, I just uh, I I would like to to make their jobs as as easy as I can, so that it's far away. It's like okay, I have a little bit more time to lose some weight, um, make them a little bit easier you know have an easier job or whatever i don't know it's like it like it comes down to like simple things sometimes too right like you people will be like oh yeah like you're fat there's like more stuff in the way but it comes down to just like easy stuff they have to like roll you over like just being lighter just makes their life easier you know like just not being fat it just makes their life easier you know it's not like fat shame like you're just you're just heavy it's just hard for them to like roll you over if they have to roll you over and do stuff you know like it's objective fact, and then uh, for me, I just I don't like inconveniencing them that way. So it's not like I'm happy. It's not like I'm happy being fat anyway, right? Like I'm not happy being fat, and then this is like uh, another reason that that uh, losing weight would be good. So it's like yeah, I'll just continue keeping up with what I'm already doing and uh, make their life a little bit easier. But it's uh, it's gonna be a little ways away until I get to go for the surgery. I'll let you guys know when I'm going for it, um, what it's like going through it all and stuff like that obviously and what all like you, you think i'm gonna go get my balls removed and i'm not gonna talk about it <laughs> come on cut you you're getting the the full the full story of uh of what goes down but it's it's a ways away still um so but i'm excited i'm really really excited it was a really cool email to get really cool email to get they didn't tell me who they were though was it i mean they told me who they were but they didn't tell me what it was for. So I just got like an email. Hi, this is Dr. So-and-so. Uh, we have an appointment for you on March 2021. Um, you know, let us know if you're good for that. I'm like, hey, yes, I am good for that. I just want to make sure that this is for that uh, orchiectomy assessment, whatever thingy, Bob. <laughs> like, like, yeah, no, that's that's what it is. All right, good. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll be there. 
I'll be there. It's you, me, maybe a a uh, what's what's the word? Intern, and then uh, you know probably the actual like surgeon person who will actually do it. And it might not even you know be you. It might be a different uh, you know person on the admin staff team, perhaps. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I've uh, it'll, it'll be like the I I, I, I yeah. So I just, I just I keep thinking ever since I I got it about going for surgery, and then waking up just like a little bit lighter, and just like how great that'll feel. Like I'm not gonna feel lighter. I'm gonna probably feel high. <laughs> you know. Probably gonna feel a little um yeah probably high. Uh, maybe a little bit of like soreness, some pain, uh, confusion as well. Whenever you wake up from surgery, there's there's typically a, an amount of confusion that goes into it. Um, yeah, that's that's what I will be experiencing. But there will also be this like exultation, you know, like just this extreme euphoria <laughs> that comes with it. Which, uh, which I really look forward to. And then just life from that point on will just be so much better. Just so much better. It's going to be so awesome. I'm so excited. And it's paid for as well, I believe. I don't believe it's going to cost me anything out of pocket. Thank you, Canada. Um, and uh, it might end up being out of pocket. If it is, I don't have the money to pay for it. Um, but I, I believe it should be covered by uh, Canada's healthcare, which is awesome. Because um, I believe it'll get done at a hospital, so anything at a hospital gets paid for. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be sweet. It's gonna be really, really sweet. Well, not everything at a hospital, but like, I, I believe you have to pay for like an ambulance too. It's like fifty bucks or something. In some places, like America, you have to pay like thousands of dollars to get an ambulance. It's not, you know, you're never, you're never paying that much at, uh, at a hospital, really. Well, not usually, anyway. It's, it's a, it's not a frequent occurrence. Um, so I think it should be covered, which will be nice. Oh, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm so excited. It was such a great email to get, you know. To, because uh, it was like a year ago that uh, that my appointment got canceled. You know, I'm supposed to already have had them chopped off, okay? They're already supposed to be gone. Thank you, COVID. I've lived this year suffering. Um, yeah. Now I get to uh, be happy. Which is awesome. And the other thing is, it might not even be that long of a wait for the surgery. Because they closed for COVID, and I was like late in the in the COVID time, you know, like it was like a March appointment last year, you know? Or February appointment, maybe? So I would have been like last anyway in the list of like appointments that they had. Probably is my guess. I, I don't think there would have been many people after me. And I definitely don't think there would have been many people like before me either. Because it was like pretty quickly before my assessment. So it could be such that I just like there isn't a huge waiting list because COVID kind of came in and they hadn't been having a waiting list and then like I was already kind of like at the front of it all and oh, yeah. it might not be that much of a waiting time like I might be able to just get in and like you know a week or two later end up having an appointment or something like that I'm not getting my hopes up but uh, I could see it happening I, I mean I would hope that it would happen I just I, I don't think it would um, but uh, it would be nice and don't worry, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain every excruciating detail to you about the uh, the experience of having my uh, <laughs> my testicles removed. It's weird, right? To me, it's it's uh, an exciting venture into the future of, of happiness. Yeah, yeah. One day I plan on uh, on getting uh, you know one step farther in the uh along that line but that's that's uh that's not covered by canada at all um i have to pay for that out of pocket all right i can get it in canada but i'm just like i don't know 
I don't trust any of the surgeons in Canada to do a good job of it, and it's not like important enough to me to where I would want to risk it, you know? I haven't heard there's uh, there's only one surgeon in Canada who actually does um, vaginoplasty, which is uh, like plastic surgery on uh, it's it it, it just it, it gives you a vagina. Um, there's only one surgeon in Canada who does it, I believe, and I've only heard bad things about him. And uh, like I'm like he's not out of business; he's still working, so I'm sure it's like fine. You know, like, people would have sued if it was that bad, right? But, I just, uh, is it worth it for me to risk it for that? I don't know. Not necessarily. I have to do my research and figure out what I'm going to do. But for right now, like, an orchiectomy is a very simple procedure. It's done all the time for, um, you know, men who have cancer or something. You know, like, it's just, it's a common procedure to just yeet somebody's balls, you know? It's, uh, it's, not, an, it's, a, it's not an everyday thing, but, uh... It's a fairly common procedure. I don't. I don't expect there to be any uh, long-term effects, other than like you know, testosterone shortage. But that's kind of a desirable effect to me. So I'm kind of like, yeah, whatever. I'll, uh, I'll go for this. Get him removed. Get him gone. And uh, come back and, and think about uh, going for SRS eventually. I think, I think the like politically correct term is P is GRS, but I I don't really care to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's uh, <sighs> it's coming, dude. It's, it's the, the the day before I record. Like the thing is, I hope it's not like a huge recovery time. It could be, right? It could be like I mean, like a week is a huge recovery time to me, right? Because uh, by that point, a few months from now, I'm hoping that I'll have, like, a proper following on my other YouTube channel at that point. On the, the Minecraft channel. Uh, I'm hoping, right? That would be nice if I did. For sure. Um, so, uh, you know, lo losing that time would be to my detriment, for sure. So I'm hoping it's a, it's a short recovery time, or that I'd at least be able to record and, like, play games and stuff. Because it could, it could be that I have to, like, lie down for a week, basically, right? And, like, not really be sitting down much. Because oftentimes the surgery is sitting down is bad. Standing is fine. Lying down is fine. But sitting is, is bad because you put a lot of uh, weight on, like, the pelvis or whatever. Whatever the, the bones are. I'm not a doctor, dude. But so when I had my... I had, uh, I had a hernia. I had, uh... What was it called? I can't remember what kind of hernia it was, um, but I had a hernia in my uh, abdomen, you know, and uh, they put a little patch in my, my gut to prevent it from, like, exploding out of my uh, <laughs> my belly, and, um, yeah, that surgery, I could not sit. I was I was not allowed to sit, and I did not like sitting either. I, 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 was, I was lying down for, like, a, a week. Um, and that's also, like, not a very complicated surgery, but, um, also that surgery, I wasn't even going for surgery. I went to the hospital not for surgery and, uh, ended up getting surgery. So I was a little bit mad about that. I went and they were, like, doing, like, a checkup or something like that. They were just gonna, like, look at stuff and be like, alright, we should do this, get you back in for another appointment and, like, you know, do that, but they just... We're like, all right, uh, we're just going to put you under and do it. I'm like, huh? huh? What? <laughs> okay, but like, what? Um, no, they did it, and it worked out fine. I haven't had any problems since, which is great. Um, and I got a little mesh in my, uh, in my belly now. Uh, but that one, I had, to, I had to lie down for, for like a week afterwards. I couldn't sit. Pooping was hard. Oh, my God. Pooping was not fun. I held in my poop for like three days. <laughs> Because you have to, like, push when you're pooping, you know? And you don't have to push hard, okay? Like, I'm not, you know, there's there's no constipation involved here. But, like, you gotta, there, there's a, a certain semblance of flex involved in pooping. Otherwise, you know, because, like, you know, after, when you're not a child, like, you're, like, you, like, condition yourself. By the time you're, like, I don't know, six or seven years old, I guess. You're, like, 
highly conditioned to not just poop your pants. So when you actually want to poop, it's like there there is some degree of of, of flex and 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 effort involved in in doing that, right? Um, and because uh, like your natural state is is to not poop, so you have to like change that and that change that flex that minor little bit so unbelievably painful when you have like an open well not it wasn't like open it was actually i think it was a little bit open um i think it was small enough that they were like yeah we're just gonna like let it heal over just be really careful um so i had like this open wound that just across like right above my belly button and it was like yeah i'm just not pooping for a bit because <laughs> it was so painful so painful. I remember the first time I pooped, I went and told I went and told my family, I pooped! And they're like, okay. I'm like, yeah, you don't get it, but that was an accomplishment. Um Anyway, that's gonna do it for today, so thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it, subscribe to see more of the future, comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.